So you've been making your way through Sekiro, and never mind the main bosses, you're stuck on the mini-bosses. Whether it's Seven Spears stabbing you and chucking you off a cliff, or the drunkard spitting a bunch of poison in your eyes, these enemies seem insurmountable, and you just can't get those prayer beats. That's alright, I was there once myself, we all start somewhere. Welcome to the Get Good Guide for Sekiro mini-bosses. Now as opposed to the previous Get Good series where we focused on each main boss in an individual video, this series is going to break it up into early game, mid game, and late game bosses, because to be frank, each mini boss doesn't warrant its own video. Regardless of that, this series will look at how to get an initial death blow on each of these bosses if you can, and then it will go into the strategies involved in dismantling each and every one of them, similar to how the other Get Good guides happened. In addition to that, because this series is on New Game Plus and I have more health and attack power than you might have, I'll be keeping that in mind and using strategies that are going to be applicable for even a first playthrough of the game, and only using moves that you would likely have at that point as well. So with all that being said, let's get things kicked off. First up on our list, we have General Neomori. Now you're going to fight quite a few generals throughout the game, and they all have two things in common. They like to do a move that'll regain their posture, which you can interrupt by just attacking them, and they like to do perilous sweeps, which you can interrupt by jumping up in the air and bouncing off their head, or alternatively, doing either Senpo Leaping Kicks or High Monk. Because of that, I would honestly suggest you practice with this guy a couple times. You got an idol right there, there's no enemies between you and him, and it makes him a great practice target to learn the timing for jumping these sweeps. Once you're ready to fight him, head on over to the left here. Down. And just walk up behind him crouched for a free death blow. After your initial death blow, as I mentioned, this battle comes down to deflecting, attacking, and just jumping the sweeps. Jump. Bounce. Once his posture gets high, we'll try and do his posture regain maneuver. If I back up a little bit, he'll do that for us so you can see it. Go on. Go on. Do it. You can interrupt it with a shuriken, an attack, really anything you want. As you can see, you can basically defeat this boss simply through deflecting and bouncing off his head. Next up, you may be fighting the ogre, and if you are, walk away and come on over to Harada Estates. Because the second thing you should be taking out is the Shinobi Hunter. Before you fight this guy, the only thing you're going to want is Makiri Counter. You're going to use this to counter out all of his spear thrusts by hitting the same button as Dodge when he tries to stab you. Before you fight him, you're going to go ahead and dismantle as many of the enemies nearby that you can. I like to go this way. Even if a couple enemies see you, as long as you can get over and kill the axe guy, the rest of them are pretty easy to take out. After the axe guy, go ahead and take out the remaining enemies. Ignore the shinobi hunter for now. We're going to actually reset this encounter in a second. After you've killed enough people, go on and run, jump into the river, and swim far enough that the health bar disappears. Now if the music starts back up, he may end up detecting you, but you can always just keep resetting until you have an opportunity like this where he doesn't. As for getting your opening death blow, that's pretty straightforward. Make sure you're crouched and stealthed as you're walking up behind him, Head on up to him and get that death blow. Now, as for Makiri counters, in general, you want to press it either as the kanji is disappearing or as it looks like the spear is about to connect. Aside from that, he also has a perilous sweep right there, which you can jump on over. Why you gotta hit me when I'm explaining stuff, bro? see how I waited until the spear got close with that attack. Even during the multi-spear attack, as you saw right there, if you get hit once, you can still stop and get the second one. 
And that's all this boss is. He's basically here for you to practice Makiri counters, and as long as you can get down the timing of pressing that button, you're not going to have any trouble. With the Shinobi Hunter down, it's time to take out the Ogre. For the Ogre, you should have access to the Flame Vent that you picked up in Harada, and a couple bottles of oil. First, we're going to go ahead and take out the enemies nearby. In general, I would suggest trying to get the opening death blow on this guy, because he's a little bit more deadly than that dude. Kill one. Kill the second. Now the ogre is going to aggro, and that's fine. We want him to aggro. Go on up, kill this spear guy. As long as you don't stop attacking, he shouldn't be able to actually get off the staff. After that, head on back a bit. The ogre should reset. See, the ogre's health bar has disappeared, and that means he's reset. Now, that's not all there is to this, because the ogre is likely going to come wandering down this way looking for us. So what you're going to want to do is sneak up behind him, you're going to get your opening death blow, and then after that, you're going to use a combination of both the oil and flame vent to take him out. Anytime you light him on fire, it'll also interrupt his perilous attacks. He has two different perilous attacks. Even with him looking at us. Just walk on over. Stick to the wall, nice and stealthed. Now, the last thing I'd recommend before fighting this boss, if you have it, is grappling hook attack. The main reason for grappling hook attack is anytime he throws you or anytime you dodge and you grappling hook back to him, you can get a couple free hits in if you have it. But otherwise, just throw some oil on him. Now, to take a look at his perilous attacks, first we have his perilous grab. That one you can back up from, and then we have his perilous jump, which you want to jump. Once he has oil on him, though, just light him on fire and keep attacking him. You should need to light him on fire three or four times. When he starts moving again, back on up, rinse and repeat. You're going to wait until the fire goes out, hit him with oil, and then light him on fire again. And you can see with this strategy, you don't even really need to get within a range where he could ever hit you with his abilities. You can basically just keep dodging and running. bit of fire is all it takes, and the Chained Ogre is down. Next up is General Tenzin. He's not that much different from the previous General, but he does have access to a Perilous Thrust and, of course, a bunch of soldiers that are guarding him. So, first we're going to take care of all the soldiers. If you're having trouble stealthing during this part, you can pop a Gotch and Sugar. Jump on up. Take care of Alarm Guy. Drop on down and take care of the Rifleman. Drop on down and take care of the Swordsman. Kill the next Swordsman. Go over here and kill the Rifleman. Run on up. Kill this one. There's one more enemy that likes to hang out near the boss, but he might come up to you. Either way, with all of them dead, or sure reset, just since he did notice me. But uh, once he does see you, just hop back on up, go back to where you fought the ogre, and just run down the path a little bit. Going just a little bit should be enough. General resets, and you can head on back. Now, as I mentioned, this is very similar to the previous general. He still likes to do his perilous sweep does gain access to a Perilous Thrust, which you should be fine tackling after taking out Shinobi Hunter. Walk up behind, get that Death Blow. If he notices you, just keep resetting. There's no reason that you have to fight him with two health bars. Other than that, just attack and deflect.
As I mentioned, he does have a Perilous Thrust, but it's even easier to counter his than it is Shinobi Hunter. So if you got past the Shinobi Hunter, you shouldn't have a problem stopping his. Next up is the Blazing Bull. Now, if you're having trouble with this guy, you can of course always fight him in the back corner using fireworks to interrupt him and hitting his hind legs, similar to how I did in the walkthrough. However, if you want to take the get good approach, all you're going to want is some Akko Sugar. What we're going to be doing here is baiting the bull's attacks, deflecting its charge, and then doing three attacks to its head to build up its posture. Want to run on in and kill this guy? We want to get rid of these two enemies first. Now the bull should hit them as long as you're positioned between the bull and the enemies. And at least early on, all you're going to really do is just honestly just run around. You're going to run around, get the bull to destroy all the crap that's in the arena, and kill the two soldiers that are here. After the bull has destroyed a fair amount of crap, it's time to start. Like the head. Run, two, three. Back up. If you can, now is when you want to pop an Akko Sugar. And make sure you have enough distance that the bull's going to charge. Left, run up. One, two, three. If you get the stagger, you can get a couple extra hits. But otherwise, just do three and then back out to be safe. Any more than three attacks and you're risking him charging you and hitting you. just like that. A couple deflects and the bull is down without even his enrage phase. Next up is the Drunkard. And FromSoft knew how hard this guy was going to be, which is why they gave you Bluebro here to help. But before we talk to Bluebro, we're going to dispatch all the enemies, similar to how we do with any boss that has a bunch of enemies protecting him. To do that, first head on over to the left here. We're going to take these two guys out. You can kill these two enemies without alerting anything else. After that, sneak on up, and we're going to kill one of the shield bros first. Next, we're going to try and get one more kill before we start running. If you can't, that's fine. Run this way, go back to the path we were just at. Now, the reason we're going over here is because Big Boy over here doesn't have uh, very good luck when it comes to dealing with these hallways. You know, he's, he's kind of wide, it's hard for him to fit, and you can see just hanging out over here, we have all of these dudes coming on over to play. Once Big Boy shows up, go on and run through here. And go back and kill the dudes you missed. The shield guys, use your axe. See, Big Boy takes quite a while to make it through that whole, uh, that whole hallway. So just doing that, we've now taken care of all of the enemies, and we can reset him. So go over here, go into the water, give him a second. You don't want to bring him near Blue Bro yet, because Blue Bro is going to help us. Once he gets over this way, you can run on back, though. Just go far enough that the health bar disappears. it does, you can head on back. Since he's right over here, we shouldn't have any issue walking right on up while crouched and getting our death blow. After the death blow, run on over and talk to Blue Bro. And now all you're going to do is just let Blue Bro beat his ass, and anytime he focuses on Blue Bro, you're going to want to hit him with your axe and help build up that posture. His attacks are slow and heavy, but they hurt. With Blue Bro at your side, you shouldn't lose this fight. The only things he has worth watching out for are when he enchants his sword with poison and when he does the perilous sweep. With a perilous sweep, jump, and bounce off the head, the same way you would the generals. Aside from that, between you and Blue Bro together, you shouldn't have any problem taking down this overgrown drunkard. Yeah. 
Make sure that he is focused on Blue Row before you try to go for your axe. Because if you instead take a big hit from him, it's gonna hurt. Very much a split. One of you at 6 o'clock. One of you at noon. Good old-fashioned two-on-one. After killing him, if you've been following the guides, you should have enough pair beads to now complete your second necklace between the hidden one that's up ahead here and the one that was back after Yobu. But that's going to wrap things up for now. So thanks for coming by to the mini boss edition to get good guy part one. In the next episode, we're going to be tackling the various enemies here in Ashina Castle right before Kenichiro, as well as some enemies over in Senpo Temple, and we'll be acquiring our next two completed prayer necklaces. So make sure to stay tuned, and I'll catch you guys soon with that part.